Hello and welcome to Misha's Journal Podcast, where I reveal what the Lord is saying through dreams, visions, and testimonials. Today's topic, crowning glory. Now, I wanted to um, start with a scripture that the Lord gave me. This is... Romans 8 and 18 and this is under um, present suffering and future glory I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us Um, the Lord gave me the scripture he's been giving me the scripture all week Um, and highlighting the fact that Um, Whatever it is that we are enduring, suffering, going through, um, it is not compared to the glory that will be revealed in us, um, that it will be in the the near future. So I wanted to to kind of start the um, episode with that, with that verse. So um, I wanted to kind of go into depth about God's ultimate purpose. God's ultimate purpose um, with us is he would love to have his own special people zealous for good works. His own special people. He's always wanted and had his own special people zealous for good works um, so the, the let me let me go into um, what this means so identifying with God's ultimate purpose so what does that mean for me and So first, let me, I'm going to look at my notes and see where I'm going to start. Um, I'll start at Titus 2 and 11, 4, which we will now say the grace of God that brings salvation, <coughs> excuse me, has um, appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed, purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works, that what God intends to get out of history is his own special people. Um, like I said earlier, zealous for good works, and that's why he waits with endless patience while the wickedness runs rampant. Um, it, it runs its course, though. It does run its course. Um, and because God's chosen a remnant with both... Um, Israelites, uh, Jews, and Gentiles, and he's not going to let history close until one of them has come to him through Yeshua, through Jesus Christ. So when we pray for Israel, we don't start by praying for political issues. We can do that, but that's not the primary that's not the primary goal here what is what we need to pray for when we pray uh, for Israel is that they will become his special people special people that God is after and that he's going to go um, on until he gets it He will go on until he gets his own very special people. 
that are zealous, zealous. Um, Zealous is, to me, uh, zealous is just ready, willing, open uh, to God's purposes. And that they, they don't, you don't have any anything holding them back. Just zealous for his good works. I know that I, um, I wasn't that way in the beginning and it took me a while to get there. Um, but I love, I, I just, I guess it's a, it's a place, it's a, a position, it's a position of your heart. Your heart needs to be positioned to be zealous for for uh, the purposes of God and for His good works. And so, um, once once we've reached that, the next uh, principle is it's connected with um, Zechariah four and six. So this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That the Lord, Lord of armies. Um, So if, so if it was a question of might or power, God has it all but might and power. Laws are military power. And it will not do what needs to be done. Right? So might, not by power, Mm -mm. not by might, no, because what needs to be done is to change the hearts of men and women. The only agent that can do that is Holy Spirit. Only, the only one that can do that is Holy Spirit. So you can get very upset about political situations of Israel and we often do but bear in mind that God is tolerating a lot of things that he doesn't approve of because he's waiting for his own special people and the power that will accomplish that is mysterious invisible power of Holy Spirit who's a person by the way Um, I'm not sure if you if you know that, I know that most people do, but um, there are those that don't, and I didn't at one point, but Holy Spirit is definitely a, our Papa. Well, that's my Papa. My dad. My father. Very close to Holy Spirit, and I want to be, I just long to be closer. And He is the key. He is the one that's with us every step of the way. When we are going through our warfare, spiritual warfare, training and our our praying, He is the one that's there egging us on and rooting for us and just there every step of the way and will be there. I've heard accounts of people that were in, that they were, um, they told about uh, future events, pr- prophetic uh, future events um, that they received through dream, vision, or however, and how some people are going to be going through persecution, and they're going to be um, shot in the stomach with a gun, and Holy Spirit is just right there with them, just like he is when I'm praying. When I'm praying, with, he's there with me every step of the way. When I'm there doing my warfare prayers, he's there and he's like, come on, keep going, keep going. You know, and it's, uh, they they said that he's like, OK, just bear, just it's OK, just just take it. OK, it's coming. You know, he's just he's the one he's a, he is. It's it's all about Holy Spirit is with you. Second Corinthians. Um chapter 3 verses 3 Paul brings out this principle in this uh, chapter he's 
He's kind of stating his qualifications to be a preacher. And it impresses me that he didn't say he studied under, you know, um, some great name with a ton of degrees. Um, but um, he said that when I arrived there, no one had ever heard the gospel. And it was a wicked city full of every kind of immorality and wickedness. But he said, go and look at the people that have heard my message and then you'll know what I believe. See that impresses me. Here, the real justification of your ministry is what you produce. So Paul could have said all he could have said anything about his uh, about being a rabbi a rabbinal learning but that wasn't what interested him he said that if you want to know whether my message works go to Corinth and there you'll find a demonstration of the result of my ministry and then he said to the Corinth in 2 Corinthians 3 and 3 you are manifestly a letter of Christ ministered by us I'm sorry us I'm sorry you guys I don't know why um, I'm reading what I wrote down and I don't know why I wrote that so big whenever I, I capitalize it's like okay got that mixed up so uh, manifestly a letter of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone but on tablets the fresh uh, the flesh of the heart and that has become so vivid to me the only agent that can write on human hearts is Holy Spirit so, um, if Holy Spirit isn't in our preaching and ministering, we can lecture people, admonish people, challenge people, accuse people, but nothing will happen. It's only in the measure that Holy Spirit flows through us that people's hearts are changed. And God is looking for a people whose hearts have been changed from hard stone to vibrant, vibrant responsive flesh. Um, yeah, he, he can't really work with us when um, we are stubborn. Uh, the biggest one is disobedience. <laughs> That's the biggest one. He can't. Yeah. I just, um, just to give context. I just, my my daughter had a dream. She started to tell me about it. And I was like, oh, write it down because that's what I do. Um, everybody's style is different. I was like, okay, well, then record it. She's just, there was so much opposition. I had to tell her about, you know, Jonah. And just like my other daughter. The Lord gave her the scripture, Jonah, about the story of Nineveh. He wants them. It's like he has to tell you. It's like we don't um, have it in us to want to to do anything somebody tells us to do. As soon as they say to do something, we automatically want to do the opposite. And so... Um, we have to get that out of us, huh? So, uh, we need to have a heart of flesh. And he'll wait until he's got, got it often incon inconvenience us. He, he often inconveniences us. And we'll have to deal with awkward people and people that get in our way and interfere with our pleasures and 
you know, our, our relaxation, our, um, our comfort zone. Brings us out of our comfort zone, yes. All the way out of our comfort zone. I remember I, I, at one point I was so, I don't know, it was just really to myself when I was young. I had a really small um, group of friends and that's just how I grew up or how I how I was. I just didn't really... I mean, I'm a super introvert, not shy whatsoever. That, that That's not what that means. I think a lot of people don't know what introvert means. It just means that um, when I'm around a lot of people, ever everybody gets uh, energy from being around other people, whereas introverts, it drains you. So that is the difference. It doesn't have anything to do with being shy. It's just... Um, supernatural, super, or sorry, superficial um, account, um, uh, relationships, encounters are draining. And authentic, real um, encounters are endearing. So there's the difference. There you go. A lot of people don't know that. They think it's all about being shy and shying away from people no it doesn't it's it's like I need to, to I need to revive after being around all of these people <laughs> anyway just wanted to give context so um I am going to conclude with with this then I I do have a, a scripture or two that I wanted to share after this as well Isaiah 37. Okay. So, um, so, let's see. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. It's all about Holy Spirit. And one of the greatest and most effective intercessory prayers is to pray for the release of Holy Spirit upon Israel. So, this message is important to the Lord. He wants us to know this. He wants them to know. He wants us to know this. It's important to him. It's very important to him. He wouldn't tell me to to speak on this if it wasn't. And what's important to him is important. It's not just filler. This message isn't just to fill the air. He, he really cares about these, th- these things. And whatever the Lord cares about, I care so much about. And if we don't, we need to pray for, um, for that, for us to care. Lord, help me care about what you care about. Help me to love what you love, hate what you hate, care about what you care about. I've had to do that um, because it's not in us all the time to want to care about um, the purposes of, of, of the Lord. So let me conclude with, we need to pray for the release of Holy Spirit upon Israel and it's beginning to happen, but it needs a great deal of, we need to to intervene there needs to be angelic intervention there needs to be they need prayer they need help and when our brothers and sisters are down and they need help we need to step in intercessory prayer is very important and so let me finish and conclude with a with scripture that he's given me Isaiah 37. I'm not sure. Um, I think. I think he wants me to read to 11. Okay, let me start from the top and go from 1 to 11. 37. 1 to 11. This is um, Jerusalem's deliverance foretold. So when King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth went into the temple of the Lord. He sent 
Elakim, the, um, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. Uh, verse 3, they told him, this is what Hezekiah says, this day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children come to the moment of birth, and there is no strength to, de to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of the field commander, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God, and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. There. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. Verse 6. I'm going to skip. Isaiah said to them, Tell your master this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words which the underlings of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country. And there I will have them cut down to the sword. I'm going to skip to 11 or 10 and 11. Say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, do not let the God, little g, you depend on deceive you when he says, Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Verse 11, surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely, and you will be delivered. So this concludes um, this episode. Remember, the Lord is always speaking, even if we aren't listening. What is he speaking to you? I will see you all next time. And thank you so much for listening. Have a good night. Bye.